on the top of the roof is going to be Alliance. So you can see a little bit of a spread at the moment. Inside of the building is going to be ANC outplayed. On the roof is going to be Alliance. And then just underneath is going to be Passion UA. It is a cake which doesn't taste too good for two teams, but one of them is their favorite flavor. Hackers has taken an angle though, again, just using that Pathfinder to get into a different position, to get a different sight line so they could just work together here. This should be Alliance's game, but we need to see something from one of the other squads to try and escape. You can see that they're trying to push onto Hackers here, trying to see if they can get that knock. However, with a zip line down, he'll be able to get out and towards his teammates if he needs to. Looks like that's exactly what they have done. And now they're going to drop onto the Passion UA underneath. They get the knock. They're looking for the second as well. Should be able to get the reset. It's a 3v3 here. And here come ANC outplayed. Unlucky with some shots. Passion UA are completely eliminated. It's up to Hackett's in effect. Effect the last man alive. Gets one. It's a 1v1. But ANC outplayed will win the 1v1. Will win the game number one. And it was all from that early rotate straight into zone. Oh, and it was secondary from that Dark Veil to be able to escape, to get out of that building, and to be able to force Alliance to have to then take the fight. Dan, it's up to anybody right now to take it up. Yeah, Danish just need to find a little ledge, a little lip to hide behind so the other two teams will spot each other out and start to engage, and then they should be able to drop and potentially win this game. The Blue Shields do still worry me, though, because if players can wipe Exo as they run out of down beast here then they would have the advantage going into that final fight purely off of the shields now you're going to see an evac tower going down here for exo that's probably just a distraction technique but we could see one of these teams take a risk here if they don't feel like the fight is winnable they might just go up but i think exo clan are going to use it as a distraction and start to try and take some positioning here slayer is doing a great job on the watson a character we don't see enough in these final zones and we'll continue to see this character though in amia be represented as well as apac north maybe it'll just tilt the tide coming back into the full-on meta so far though exo clan not worried about the fences they're worried about being offensive as well smokes from above from danish case when he doesn't have much in his vision right now you can see it from his perspective he's got a thermite but he's just waiting biding his time and no danish will not have been able to get on the purples before this final fight what will that mean for the team on height who's been dominating so far in terms of position to try to claim a win they still have the high ground though they can work these legs and they can just wait for the teams to start to unfold and they can throw grenades if they have any but i'm not sure how much resources that actually they have to use here but it's just a case of hoping that the damage is done by the other squads you that's gotta go down exo slayers does case winning can he clutch it up if so this is just danish dropping down for a nice morning treat here as they clean it up in game two the position pays off and young Hong Kong and squad take the win. Who's going to break first here? It's going to be Alliance. They back up. But by doing this, they have taken control of this side of the building, which is the much stronger side of the building. As you can see, there's only one exit point here for Rats. And Unlucky is going to get that first knock as well. So Alliance, it might seem like they were having a little bit of fun, but there was a little bit of calculation going down. As to why they were making that decision to hold that door, to lock them in that room, because it means now that they can control here... But Unlucky has gone down, but they should be able to reset. Hackers has also fallen. Looks like Alliance might just struggle a little bit to escape. Elsewhere, FA Kids, they're watching and they are destroying the remainder of Rats. Gaming Gladiator is still in a fantastic position as well on this west side. They can kind of watch all this commotion happen and then join the fight as full reds. And now they see their kill feed starting to light up and that's when they make the push. They see the knocks coming in as well. And now they can take this height on the rock. They can finish off this kill. They can finish off this team. Rats eliminated in the meantime, just that solo alive. But who else is still alive on the other side of the zone? That's the real question. It's Alliance and FA Kids who are having a little bit of a scrap. It's a two squad remaining situation right here and gg they're taking damage but they're outputting even more and gg will be the team who take home the final game here on store point the gaming gladiators again assert their dominance that we have seen so many times throughout emir the question is what did gg do here it's kind of an evac it's an all or nothing they're going to try and shoot this out i would imagine but instead they're going to hit the bang hole which means Ooh. it's going to be much more difficult they can't afford to shoot that out because they're going to have to try and stay healthy themselves so they're going to give that up also you're going to see not just the evac tower being used as a way to get back up but also for the water flare to spread it out to use the war hacks that become available and dms now being taken apart systematically by gg who are down on that low ground yeah, Press is still the last one alive. 3D Max are looking good, though, but it's just yet Queen as well as Kizaron who are alive to try to finish it off. It should be Gaming Gladiators able to come in and swing this one. You would imagine so, right? GG from the low ground. Make a huge, huge play. 
DMS have one still alive. GG down to a two. And 3D Max also down to a two. So this is not one team with a number superiority situation, but it looks like the job will be done for them. GG will walk in from that low ground up to the height, and they will take the game here on World's Edge. It was a masterful display of decision-making to get in that position to even compete to win that game. Side, but now it's starting to get interesting on the northern side as well. All these teams on the construction building and surrounding areas moving at once. Gaming Gladiators already lost one, but should be able to get the revive. We'll get the revive. And we still have eight squads left in this circle. This kill feed's about to blow up. Fulling is still alive, by the way. Blast is taking damage as he tries to cross towards his teammate Lufka. They're trying to take this position away. Bang Ol's down in front of them as well. And all of a sudden, Full English, they're starting to give a little bit back. They were saying, we remember how this went. But unfortunately, it's not going to be good enough for them. Full English eliminated and GG will get ahead of the traffic. We'll hold this side of zone, but light is down and they're going to have to hold off a push. All the meanwhile, players have dived straight center zone to try and hold a position, but it's going to be very difficult to do so. Everyone's going to be around them. A lot of smokes to try and give yourself cover. No Bloodhound to save you now these days as gaming gladiators down to just one blasto doing his job eliminating blacklist international five squads now remain dms gone as well so gaming gladiators is just a blast but he's on the side of zone where nobody else is and he might be able to punch a teammate back into a position to maybe stick a res slayers still alive here for exo clan as well playing behind a couple of those knockdowns. Nine lights have just been eliminated in the meantime. It's four squads now remaining. And Blast tries to turn his attention towards where Exo Clan were. Stay healthy, you'll be eliminated in the meantime. And now he should be able to take out Exo Clan as well. It's two squads remaining. GG down to just two. Can they clutch as a duo? Shots come in, but they're not going to be good enough. And players will close out game number five. Players who made the early move right to dead center of the circle used the cover of everyone else's gunfire and said, look, this should be a comfortable one as long as we can avoid all those sight lines. So FA Kids with the high ground with all red Evos as well, dressed to impress in this end game. But full English still with a chance. It's slim. But the play calls from them right now inside of this building could not have more pressure on them. The full English with a chance to maybe have a Hail Mary here to get to regional finals. Nine Lies are making their move, though, to try and get into some sort of position to stay alive. And they have found a zone to play with here. There's a lot of fire and damage they're taking, though. The FA Kids are rising, and they are above everyone. But does this open an opportunity here for FA Kids to get these kills quickly enough that they can deal with full English as they leave the building? It looks like they've got a couple of downs now. There's only one to deal with. What do Full English do from here, though? Zidane is the player to watch. He is the one up on height who will be watching the exit of Full English. A little off angle being taken here by Jay Savage as well. Last player is going to be in behind that knockdown, and now the Full English needs to send it. They will be eliminated, and FA Kids will claim the final champion banner of the day. The final champion banner of the regular season. And i got to say, I kind of want to... Skip to the final standings because that was quite some endgame. A very exciting endgame and a, a, maybe a last chance for Full English to try and get a victory to see if they could get enough points to reach regional finals. I don't think they've quite done enough, especially with the likes of Stay Healthy players, ANC outplayed, all outperforming them today and putting some real big points on the board. But for Vex, who were in 18th position, may have dropped out of regional finals spot. You've got Eternal, who were in 17th position, not playing today, may have dropped out of a regional final spot. It was always going to be the case going into today's games that if you hadn't put enough points on the board and you're just watching those other teams competing today you're going to be biting your nails hoping that they didn't succeed sadly for them they did we had three teams outside of the top 20 all have amazing match weeks today well keon found a cheeky little spot there he got stunned for a second but didn't take too much damage by the looks of things from that bango and now you're seeing keon He's going to overextend a little bit. He's going to find a little bit of space, and he's going to find a knock as well. Walsy is also starting to get a little bit active inside of this building. His bleed esports, who have been center zone, will be eliminated as well. And not moist are fighting like animals. Every 3v3 we see them in, they're just wiping them. Not Moist full sent it onto Bleed, and they said, actually, that building looks pretty nice, and now Furia get involved with the Oblivion fight, but now it's a three versus three, Not Moist versus Furia. We do have the building available for Not Moist, but they are currently spreading themselves to try and get angles, and they almost take down Madness because of it.
Well, Keon takes a little bit of damage as well. And you can see the guild and Waltzy trying to do what they can just to hold the line at the moment. Timmy's the player who's playing a little bit of an off angle here as we see Furia retreats to Keon, who is going to be playing that rock. Now, when you're talking about zone, when you're talking about positioning, Not Moist certainly have that at the moment with the building that they find themselves in and with the spray that comes in as well. However, look at Keon with that havoc from distance, taking down Waltzy. And now it's up to Not Moist to turn this fight around and they manage to make it a 2v2. Yeah, it certainly turned around. 2v2 now. Timmy and Gil should be able to reset ever so slightly, but now you can see the push coming oh! through. Timmy, left on his own. It's a 1v1. Timmy trying to do what he can. He's got armor swaps to play with as well. Tries to switch his attention to this player and find the knockdowns to play behind as well. Medkit going to be popped in the meantime. A lot of pressure coming in. He's trying to stick this medkit, and if he can, surely he's in a position to clutch this up. And oh, Timmy! Timmy will win the 1v1. He will clutch. And Not Moist will be your champions in game one. And Not Moist, how important could that win be right off the rip? Design 4 has a chance to create an opening with his Sentinel. If he can hit a headshot, then maybe he can change their fortunes. It's a difficult thing right now. And this is the Bangalore ultimate. That's going to force them to either take this damage or move. And I think they got to take the damage. Hit a shield battery and try to just withstand it, right? Because they can't fall down this early. So there will be maybe a little bit of healing and some slow pacing pacing here. In fact, it avoids all of disguise. I'm not sure how that was angled, but somehow don't take any damage from that one. That was from Bleed Esports, uh, excuse me, Oblivion. And now they're going to try to be pushing in as well. Disguise still on top. Five squads left and reads. This is Oblivion who looks to be going down. And there's another Bangalore ultimate as well. Going to try to give space for DSG if they can do it. They've got a tall task ahead of them to try to win this one because sooner than later, they will not be able to stay here. I mean, one thing they can do, though, is they can zip above complexity. They can take a zip towards any of the buildings, any of the rocks. And obviously, the fact that you get 50% less damage it means they should be able to cross and at least put up Ooh. some sort of fight. The problem is the whole lobby, including Lou with a devotion, lights them up. So complexity continue to hold this spot. They will not give this up. And complexity are doing everything they need to do. This could be a win for them, but they cannot throw it here. Lou inside the building, Kimchi locking it up with the Pharaoh fluid onto the doors. Rambo and Native pushing in as well. Snipe down, taking a peek. RKN with a thermite, it misses. And there's a Gibraltar ultimate. I can't believe a defensive bombardment's in a final zone in the ALGS in match day nine, but it's certainly doing damage. Native, they're still alive, but complexity come in and it's complexity making it as simple as possible they get the w to close out game number two so now it's a straight 3v3 yes board do have to drop first but there is certain cover that they can play with if they use smokes effectively they can smoke out tsm and get into a position to maybe take some high ground away from them here this is going to be a very interesting engagement and ultimates could be a huge difference here you can see verhost has smokes to work with but no bang ult that he can put down Jen is down as well, so grenades aren't going to be effective. TSM will be able to eat those up. Reps is playing the anchor roll at the moment, and he's maybe going to look for a stick as a player tries to fall. Do a little bit of damage on the way down. Reps is now going to have to move up to his teammate, but the cat wall is going to force TSM away. But there's the Jen doing its job. It's going to eat up all of those grenades that are being thrown, and MJ takes some damage. The scan comes in, and TSM realizes that he's isolated. They're trying to swing on him. I love the Catwalk to try and take the high ground, and I love the, the swing from TSM as well, and they do get the opener here. Zap will get that opener, Verhulst will follow up, and Verhulst will finish off as well. TSM will win the final game here on Stormpoint. And the Watson pick was one of the big reasons for it. Great shots initially, great recognition of where that player was a little bit isolated, and TSM, they execute beautifully. DSM, Liquid Alienware, Bleed, Empire Gaming, they all fall down. All the soldiers, men, and now LG looking to find a way to win this battle, if not the war, for the game. We told you they sometimes like to heat up at the end. And World's Edge with a Sky West pick at Skyhook with a zone that favored them. They could just be LG's moment. So far, though, Temper goes down to Stay Naughty, finding damage with the Havoc and the Hemlock just like that and gets his level three perk at the end he may not need it though because he's still got EEC and LG to go through and what a contrast it is from LG from early exits on Stormpoint with a bad POI to the best POI here on World's Edge and making it count now it's a three versus three against Cloud9 LG do have the north but the zone is going to pull them a little bit further south 
Arguably, Cloud9 have lack of cover here, and LG can spread themselves out and try and create a pinch. This is going to be a difficult one to get out of for C9. That's a, that's a see you later. Good night, sweet dreams. LG Funk and Sykes saw that it was just a seer scan saying, you got two up going against us? Oh, no problem at all. LG happy to swing and happy to swing for the fences. Home run and a game one here in game four on World's Edge. Oh, Vale going to go down. And that's going to be from Bleed Esports, I believe, trying to move their way and inch their way forward just a little bit. Shots coming in, but not great ones coming in from Shuby, but enough to just force that team away from the height. And now they have to play close to this wall. They know there's going to be teams that will look down upon them, but if they hear a fight take place, if they see an opportunity to move, this guy's taken out as a fourth squad in this lobby. They will get fourth place. But if a fight breaks out, then Bleed Esports will have the opportunity to climb up and maybe do some damage. But Complexity now, they have the zone at their backs and that's causing them problems. Fluffy Amos, by the way, who are outside of the regional spots before this day, are now finding themselves within the top three and a chance to get a big game on the board with the victory as Complexity go down. It's Fluffy Amos versus Bleed. They get the first knock as well, so Fluffy Amos now in a 3v2 to win the game to send match number five their way and give themselves a chance of maybe making regional finals. It's one more player to find. Find him, they do. It's just a case of finishing this off. Fluffy Amers in game number five, our penultimate game of the day, give themselves a chance. Elsewhere down on the low ground, LG who already have one win here on World's Edge. Just avoiding all of the lines of sight and using that cover that's provided by the bridge. Temper now make their move onto Not Moist. This is a big moment in this game and the big spray coming in from Walsy. Massive shots and it's Temper that are going down and Temper who potentially going out. How are their chances going to be for regional finals? But for Not Moist, they are so strong and healthy right now with all of these red Evos to work with. And they find themselves in such a good position. The way they are working together, the chemistry is on point. Oh, what a change it has been for Moist. Adding Timmy to this roster, they now push themselves up up into second place. They are chasing TSM. And you have to remember as well, it's not just the addition of Timmy. Walsy taking over as the IGL is making some great decisions for them in this match day. And especially when the pressure is at its highest in this final game for them. Normois doing such an incredible job to force their way into this building. Pick up the kills around it. Command the space as well as the zone now starts to close. Nail-biting moments, not just for those who are at the top of the leaderboards, but also those who are around 20th, those who played yesterday and are watching on, eagerly awaiting to see how many points are required by those who are around them. But it is not Moist who are in the ascendancy at the moment, trying to push up on the team that is above them, but just patiently waiting. Maybe because they're forced to, because of these Watson fences, it is such a difficult push to try and make. Well, now they're going to send it. The damage is there. The knock is going to come in as well. Once he gets yet another kill, as Cloud9 now will fall at the hands of Not Moist. This is a monster, monster game from them, but the zone now is making their decisions even more difficult. It's a blind rotate out of this building into the zone. Waltz is going to be last to go. Maybe he's going to try and pop a med kit and force himself to survive a little bit longer. Timmy goes down. Three squads remaining. His flat will fall. Empire Gaming will fall as well as Not Moist still are in this game. Not Moist up into second place and chasing Wolsey. TSM. But I don't know if they can have a chance here. No, it's LG who come out on top. LG who get another victory here on World's Edge. It may have been all about Not Moist, but LG went under the radar and get another dub here on World's Edge. Well, well, well. Not Moist just had a banger of a final game. The way they navigated that traffic was so, so impressive. And Waltzy, the confidence that I saw from him in some of those fights and the decisions that he was backing himself on, absolutely incredible. LG, of course, should be celebrated for taking that win, but now the conversation turns from what we just saw, Dan, to what it means, because we have to try and tally up all the totals, see what teams are going to be going through to those regional finals. And of course, not just what teams are going to regional finals, but what spots they're going to be in in comparison to those land qualification spots as well. Well, one thing that we do know is Not Moist, with those kills getting into second place, did overtake TSM to take first place here in the match day, which is such a huge boost for their chances of getting into playoffs as well. Remember, they were outside of regionals before today, but now they are suddenly looking like a team that can test for land.